Dear Class of 2006, As my own students have heard me say on many occasions, there is an instructive adage widely known and frequently quoted throughout Asia. A fish is the last being to discover water. We all tend to swim, at least somewhat unconsciously, in an ocean of conventional thinkings, doings, and believings that we rarely question, making the uncritical assumption that these customary ways of thinking, doing, and believing that we have inherited from our predecessors are the only possible ones, or at least, that they are the best ones. It is, of course, a major goal of the ongoing process of self-education to disabuse ourselves of these foolish notions and to discover that the water in which we swim always, in some measure, distorts and limits our perception of what constitutes both reality and truth. The recognition that many of our cherished cultural norms are like an imperfect lens through which we view the world can be a decidedly disturbing experience. Since this objectivity is often accompanied by the uncomfortable realization that societies and individuals frequently behave in ways that are at odds with their professed principles. I know that this is a commonplace observation, but on this day when you are about to graduate, when in the words root meaning you are going to step out into the world, I want to encourage you to pursue this twofold task of examining the water on which we swim and seeking to resolve any of the contradictions that you thereby discover in yourself and your culture. Pursuing this sort of examination always results in some interesting questions, but before I burden you with a few of them, I will tell you why I have chosen this theme for today's address. Many of you are aware that a professor at the University of Arkansas was recently dismissed from his teaching post, and I was appalled by his statement that one reason for his firing was that his administrative superiors did not approve of his unorthodox, unorthodox teaching methods and preferred faculty members who were not controversial. As a teacher, I am profoundly distressed that the term controversial can be rendered so readily in a negative sense. I grant that the word has many shades of implication, but after all, it essentially means something like an opposing view, and there can be no sort of music in this world without such creative tension. Further, when I think about controversial people, the names that occur to me constitute a list of many of humanity's greatest benefactors. Were not Buddha, Lao Tzu, Socrates, Confucius, Jesus, Gandhi, Abraham Lincoln, Henry David Thoreau, and Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. controversial? Did not these people ask their contemporaries to examine the water they were swimming in? Did they not point out some of the contradictions within their respective cultures? To put it in a different way, when did being conventional become a virtue, particularly in education? And so, my young friends, in a spirit of healthy controversy, I will offer you a few questions for your intelligent consideration and thereby invite you on this auspicious occasion to begin what I hope will be a lifelong exploration of our collective assumption about the way things are. The questions I have selected are just a few among what seems like an almost endless number, but since we adults are not doing especially well in answering them, I hope that in coming years you can provide us with some fresh perspectives on their possible resolution. Immigration is currently a divisive issue in America, especially as it relates to those whom we uncharitably call illegal aliens. But if we want people to register legally as foreign residents in our country, why do we make it so difficult to obtain a green card? Further, many Americans insist that these immigrants must learn English, and I am not suggesting that this is a bad idea. But since we are all a nation of immigrants, I often wonder how many of these linguistic nationalists 
behaving in accordance with their own logic, have learned to speak a Native American language. I'm fairly certain that history in this land did not begin the arrival with the arrival of my immigrant group. I'm fairly certain that history in this land did not begin with the arrival of my immigrant group. Did it begin with the arrival of yours? Finally, many people proclaim that America is a Christian nation, but if that is so, then why are these purported Christians not more concerned with being the keepers of their immigrant brothers in accordance with the unequivocal teaching of Jesus in the Gospels? Can I Mexico and the United States cannot, by definition, be a Christian 